introduce Chris Fremantle, um, who's a producer and researcher working with artists, designers, architects in the public realm. Um, he's going to focus on two current collaborations between the arts and the sciences. Nil by Mouth, which is a project involving emerging artists toppling between food producing communities and the Scottish Government's strategic research programme, Environmental Change, Food, Land and People. Um, the second is a residency programme between the MFA Art, Science and Nature at Edinburgh's College of Art and the Cardiovascular Sciences Research Group at the Queen's Medical Research Institute in Edinburgh. So Chris is going to talk about these two collaborative projects. So I should pass on to you. Thanks very much, Heather. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, it feels slightly like coming from another country just at the moment. Um, certainly in Scotland there's a discussion about whether it's going to be another country, I don't think it really is um, at the moment ever going to be that different. But um, obviously there's, it's, there's quite a lot of interesting things going on in Scotland over quite a long period. Rob would be able to talk about that, the work of people like Christine Borland and Jackie Donaghy and Stephen Hurrell, um, amongst others, who've been working with various forms of scientists um, over quite a long period and, and it's quite interesting because we have an enormous exhibition going on in Scotland at the moment called Generation. So Generation is a, a slightly bizarre exercise which means that every gallery and museum has contemporary art on in it at the same time and it's all curated by one person. So one curator has actually curated every space in Scotland simultaneously from, um, from a gallery up in Thurso through a gallery in, in, um, in Helmsdale, in Vanessa Art Gallery, Aberdeen Art Gallery, galleries on uh, Anne Lantier on Lewis um, and the and Tobar on Mull as well as all the galleries in the Central Belt and all the way down to Gracefield in Dumfries all have one, ex one huge survey show on at the same time so if you want to see what's been going on in Scotland you can come down and if you're prepared to travel around you really will see everything that's been going, everybody who's been working over the past 25 years is represented in this one enormous survey show. So, and it's quite interesting because there is really quite a lot of collaborative work across disciplines in that. I mean, quite a surprising amount. Um, but I'm not gonna talk about that. That's not what I'm here for. Um, so, um, my colleague Ben Twist introduced me recently as a man with more hats than a hat shop which is a very nice way to talk about all the different sorts of things I get, on, get involved in. So I'm currently working as the producer on, on a, an art and design strategy for the New South Glasgow Hospitals. Um, I'm managing um, a project called Nil by Mouth. I didn't invent the name, but it's a great name because nobody ever forgets it. Um, the person who invented the name, that was the sort of commissioner of the program, um, Mike Bonaventure at the Crichton Carbon Centre has three projects. The first one is called Do Not Resuscitate. The second one is Nil by Mouth. And the third one, which hasn't, he hasn't quite worked out how to do yet, is called Dead on Arrival. Um, his, the, the project is, is fundamentally about sustainability and a low carbon future. And you can get the sense that he thinks that we have some very fundamental cultural problems that need to be put to put to bed. I also work on, on, the, on, on a program called Sighted Plus, which is the National Public Art Report, the National Development Program for Things Beyond Public Art in Scotland. And I work as a researcher on the MFA Art, Space and Nature at Edinburgh College of Art and on Design in Action, which is an open innovation program at Grace, uh, which is a NHRC knowledge exchange hub across all the art schools in Scotland. Um, and previously, I worked with Helen, uh, Helen Mayer Harrison and Newton Harrison and David Haley on Greenhouse Britain, which toured around the UK between 2006 and 2008 and looked at the impact of climate change on the island and how the shape of the island as we know it will be redrawn by climate change. So 
and something we all take for granted will not look like it does now, self-evidently. I've worked, and anyway, I've done some other stuff there, you can see. Um, I don't, I'm not, I suppose, I was trying to think about how I conceptualize what I do, and I suppose that that metaphor of bench to bed is quite an interesting way to think about it. So every, so from working with people who are working with in, in the context of primary research all the way to the point where it impacts on a hospital or on a community or engages with a hospital or a community. So I, su I suppose that's a way to understand how I think of myself working. Um, but I don't think of myself as a specialist in relation to art and science. So I'm not here as a specialist in, in what is a community of specialists. Um, so I wanted to talk about these, these two projects, um, art, the, 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 particularly the residency that Art Space and Nature has with the, with the cardiovascular researchers at, Edinburgh, at the University of Edinburgh, the British Heart Foundation Centre of Research Excellence, at the Queen's Medical Research Institute, and actually if you go into the acronyms it really gets a bit silly, but what happened, what's been going on for six years now, is that the Art Space and Nature has a cohort of about 10 or 12 MFAs a year, and each year one or, between one and three of them are selected in a competition to do a residency with the cardiovascular researchers um, at this at the at this very prestigious research institute, um, and each you know in in a three month residency for an MFA, this is a this is a really interesting experience and a really useful process of understanding how to work across disciplines. But so I'm not talking to you about this as being the cutting edge of art and science projects individually, I'm talking to you about it as being something which structurally is really interesting and works well. So this is, this is Mark Eichheit's piece that he installed in the gallery that we have as part of the program, the Tank Gallery at Edinburgh College of Art, which, where he used loading dye. Um, this is Eddie Van Murek's piece which explored um, pathways that scientists were uh, trying, creating trajectories based on the, on the way the scientists described their research. So this is 50 different scientists' trajectories of research mapped together into a landscape. This is Chandra Kasali Bell's work with Roger Tyson's, using Roger Tyson's um, it's, it's and, uh, color proteins, colors associated with proteins, which are understood by reflected light in the, in the lab, and again in another format. And this is the most, one of the, one of the recent um, cohort that finished just now, um, Javier, who was, who was looking at the, at, so the, the scientists in the cardiovascular research unit work with zebrafish, and one of the things they're really interested in is the way zebrafish hearts are completely transparent to start with. But as the fish grows, they become more and more opaque. And so there's a, there's a relationship between growth and opacity, which then for Javier, who's actually an architect, became an issue in relation to architectural space as well as biological space. So each of these projects is a, is a dip into a process, and I suppose our, the challenge we see for ourselves at this point is having this MFA level relationship is how we overlay a PhD level relationship in that space. So that what we're trying to do, and what we'd be really interested in talking to people about, is the possibility of people who are interested coming and doing a PhD in this shared space between um, art space and nature and the cardiovascular <coughs> researchers. Um, and that's something which we hope we'll bring online over the next 18 months. So the second project that I wanted to talk about is, a, is this project Mill by Mouth. 
instigated in the first instance by the Kraken Carbon Center, um, working with Wide Open, which is a, an environmental art organization based in the southwest of Scotland, um, and working with the Scottish Government's strategic research program, um, Environmental Change, Food, Land, and People. So, I, the strategic research program has actually been constructed as an interdisciplinary space so that no one research cluster in any one of the institutions that make up the research program owns any thread of work. So that they have been forced to work in, in an interdisciplinary way in, from the outset of this program, which is a five-year research program. We recruited, we, recruit, we, we secured funding from um, Creative Scotland's talent development program, and we recruited four artists or collectives to work to uh, to work in this context, which and Heather picked up on the word toggling. So we created the opportunity for them to undertake residencies with food producing communities and do workshops with the scientists. So they've spent, they, they came onto the program, they did a workshop up at the Hutton Institute, they then went for two weeks of residency in various parts of Scotland, they then came back, did more workshop activity with the scientists, and went back on residency. And, and actually, there were also, in amongst that, one-to-one -one conversations began to emerge. And so we, had the opportunity that all the, all the scientists were going to the, to the World Congress on Soil Science, um, which is taking place in, has just taken place in Korea, and we were invited to present a poster in which we tried to, to visualize and understand how this process of toggling and movement across disciplines came about and works. So you can see that this, this um, triple helix structure is, is allows us to talk about the ways that, that different configurations of people come together. And I'm sorry, the, the text is too small to be legible up there, but we've tried to see it through with actually some of the comments made by people in the process. So there's a lovely comment from um, one of the scientists at the Rowan Institute who said that she'd been looking at the work of the Center for Genomic Gastronomy, one of the participants in the program before, all of this started because she was really interested in the way artists could be provocative in a way that scientists couldn't be provocative. So there's some really nice threads picking up in this process. So the Nil by Mouth project hasn't kind of reached a conclusion at this point. We've just done a review process where we've seen the artists presenting their ideas and they have about 24, 25 ideas between them. We're just in the process of organizing an event that will take place at the Scottish Parliament in the autumn, where they will present to, back to the scientists and to the politicians about ways that artists can contribute to a debate about sustainability using food and farming as a, as a way to engage people. But I wanted to finish with some thoughts about disciplinarity in this from what these two programs suggest to me. So, I've been reading, that this is actually taken from, a, from my colleague David Haley's analysis of Nicolescu's work. Nicolescu suggests that multidisciplinarity it makes a lot of sense to me in a hospital context. So, when the, when, when the hospital talks about a multidisciplinary group, looking at an issue like cleanliness, they'll get round the table, the cleaners and the surgeons and the nurses, and each one will talk about the way they are dealing with the issue of hospital cleanliness. They won't do the interdisciplinary thing, so the surgeons won't do any, won't learn anything from the cleaners, and the nurses won't learn anything from the surgeons. They're each responsible for their area, but they get round the table to try and close up the gaps, right? So, Interdisciplinarity then has, a, has this different goal, which is about where those people might share or exchange ideas or methods or techniques. And 
clearly that, that's a different thing. So in the context of the art, space and nature program, we think of, I think we can conceptualize ourselves at the start of, the pro of each cycle of the program, we start with a multidisciplinary group. And our objective is that by the end of the program, we have an interdisciplinary group. That they move from a bunch of people with a different set of skills sitting around the table to a bunch of people who've exchanged skills across their different disciplines and with the people they've engaged with. But what struck me about, particularly around the Nil by Mouth project, when I looked at, when I applied this structure to that, it seemed to me that interdisciplinarity is not symmetrical. So, in effect, you see lots of artists appropriating ideas from the scientists, but I'm continually wondering how do the scientists appropriate ideas from the artists? So if you look at particularly the work of, of the group like the Center for Genomic Gastronomy, they're playing around very vigorously with all sorts of ideas from science and reappropriating them and using them. They produced, they, they produced a barbecue sauce made with, um, with um, strains of the various things that you put in a barbecue sauce that all result from genetic mutations done during the 50s using radiation. So obviously the barbecue sauce is not actually irradiated, it's not dangerous, but it raises a set of issues. But I continually am looking and trying to understand how the scientists would come back and take <coughs> techniques from the artists. And I think, so I think you need to think about whether interdisciplinarity is symmetrical. Um, and then you've got this idea of transdisciplinarity about between disciplines, across disciplines, beyond disciplines. And I, I struggle with this particularly. And the closest I've come to thinking about it is that actually, in a way, the shift in the arts and the shift in art practice away from describing yourself as being a sculptor or a printmaker or a painter is a form of prefiguring trans or post-disciplinarity in that political sense of prefiguring <coughs> demonstrating the way that, that the future could be. And so it seems to me that maybe the arts are actually prefiguring an understanding of transdisciplinarity by moving away from talking about themselves in terms of the traditional categories, moving to issue-based work, so, thank you very much. <laughs>